there's a few rules that I think every uh, Dungeons and Dragons dungeon master uh, develops over the course of a lifetime. That sometimes, you know, when you're talking to other players, they'll tell you, but usually not. I think every I think every DM kind of independently comes across a few of these rules, and one of them is never put a deck of many things in your campaign, ever. And uh, this is the story of how I learned that rule on my own. Because again, when I started off, I was you know I I never really DM'd all that much, so uh, I didn't know this. And so I think every per, every DM when they look into their uh, their their books, they see the deck of many things, and they're like, "That looks like some fun." You know, we 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 could do that. And you you kind of get a deck of cards, and you you have this whole session built around them finding a deck of many things, and just trying to see. It's kind of a little social experiment to see what they do with it. And uh, it's a bad idea. It's 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 never never a good idea, and it never works out well. So if you don't know, and if you're not a D and D player, you don't. Uh, a deck of many things is one of the more infamous artifacts that uh, that the adventurers can find over the course of their of their campaigns. And what it is, it's a magic deck of cards. I think it's 23 cards, and. Uh, it's basically half good, half bad. It's kind of like a tarot deck, but not really. So, like, I think 11 of them are good, and they'll give you things like, uh, they'll give you a wish, a wish, you can wish for anything you want, uh, they'll give you great riches, they'll give you a castle and, you know, land to around it, they'll give you, like, uh, you can get out of any situation you want, like, any bad situation. Um, you can get like an army, you can get a group of followers that will, like loyal retainers that follow you. And the bad things are things like uh, you lose all your worldly possessions, or you are imprisoned 20 miles beneath the earth, or you, um, you have to fight the Grim Reaper and you'll probably lose. You know, so things like that. Um, so the way it was working was I built this, cam this, I built this campaign around the. Uh, the, the premise was the players had been cursed by this great and evil shaman who was uh, who had taken revenge. They killed him, and in, he, in his death curse, he, he put a curse on them so that they would turn into beasts. And it would, they, within a week, they would turn into animals forevermore, and they would they would always be cursed. So over the they would turn they were turning to furries basically. So like they were like, oh, we can't we gotta stop this. And we get like normal reverse curse spells weren't working, so they had to go into the jungles to a temple and find a. Uh, find a genie. There was like a, a genie in the te in this temple. And so they fight through this dungeon that I'd made, they get all the way to the end, and they find the genie, the, the genie lamp. And so the, you ha I have to explain some of the players here. Uh, I, at the time I knew three mics, and so we always put a little word in front of their name so that we could differentiate or call them different things. And so there was Store Mike who on the store, there was Crazy Mike, who was this big, tall, hairy guy who, lo who looked like a roadie for Iron Maiden, and I think he was a roadie for, like, Motorhead at one point. And then there was... Uh, big Mike. There was Big Mike, who was a big guy. So, um, then we also had... Uh, there was Zarek, and then there was Vegan Steve. And I, I, we just called him Vegan Steve because he was vegan, and he always brought the uh, the most ridiculous vegan dishes to the store, because he wouldn't... We all, we all ate crap at the store, so we always, this was the thing, at, near the store there was like a Chinese restaurant, there was a Peter Piper pizza directly next door to us, and then there was a Taco Bell, which was about a block away. And so we were all so lazy that none of us, whenever we were playing a game, we never felt like walking all the way to Taco Bell. And in fact, we never actually felt like going to the Chinese restaurant. It was like, it was like 30 yards away, but right next door, it was the Peter Piper pizza, and they had the shittiest fucking pizza ever. This shit was so greasy. It was that kind of really shitty pizza that you pick up, and as soon as you pick it up, the cheese just slides right the fuck off. It's like limp and horrible, and it tasted like crap. So, um, but the thing is, we were all so lazy, none of us felt like leaving the game for that long. We just, we'd immediately, we would like roll off and the lowest player got like, they would Fuck, and they would go off and they'd order the pizza, come back, 20 minutes later we'd go get the pizza, bring it back. You know, we could have 30 fucking yards to the Chinese restaurant, and they had much better food, by the way. Like, it was great. They cooked fresh. It was it actually, like, 
in terms of takeout Chinese food, this was above average, like really far above average. But no, 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 with pizza because pizza kept we, we they thought like we could eat cold pizza. We you know we didn't want to reheat the shit, so like we just you, know, you could eat cold pizza, whatever. So we ordered three pizzas, whatever. But vegan Steve, no, he brought Tupperware full of this vegan shit, and he brought like. Uh, I, remember he, like, I can't remember if it was tofu, but I remember one time he brought fucking algae. There was like some kind of algae dish that was like, it was like vegetables and algae, and he would like dip the vegetables in this algae, and he's like, this is pure photosynthesis, man. And like, and so we didn't like, he, Vegan Steve was this guy we didn't really like, but we kept him around. Um, it wasn't like we hated him, but he was always so pretentious about his veganness, you know, he was, he was like, he was always being like, he would always criticize us as room. he's like, you know, you eat shit, this stuff will keep you alive forever, and we're guzzling down this, like, solid slab of limp cholesterol, being like, shut the fuck up, vegan Steve, oh, you know, and we're like, grease on our fucking hands, and like, like, they made fun of me one time, because I took a paper towel, I took the napkins from the Peter Parker pizza, and I would put it on the on the pizza, and the napkins, like, dissolved. You could fucking see through the napkins. And they were like, oh, what, you don't like the pizza? And I'm like, no, this pizza tastes like ass. And they go, well, why don't you go to the Chinese restaurant? I'm like, it's too far. But yeah, Vegan Steve. We didn't like him because, for a few reasons. One, because he was vegan and he was an asshole about it. Um, and the second reason was because uh, he wasn't very good at D&D. &D. Meaning, he didn't really know the rules, and he played his class like an idiot. So, like, I can't remember, I actually can't remember what his class was. I think he was a thief, but he never played like a thief. So he would never, like, suggest, like, maybe I should go ahead and search for traps, or, like, maybe I should sneak ahead and backstab a guy. No, he just played it like a fighter. Like, he was just, he was just, he didn't play very good. Um, so he was always that guy who would ask, like, a... During, during a combat session, he'd be like, what do I roll again? And we'd be like, the 20-sided die, fuck nut. Every, like every other fight, you roll the 20-sided die. And he, we'd ro he'd roll, and he wouldn't know if he rolled good or not. Um, we'd, do, we'd say, do a strength check, and he'd roll a 20 and be like, 19, I made it! And we'd be like, no, Steve, a 19 is not good for a strength check. And he's like, but it was good in the fight. And we're like, I know, but in D&D, rolling low on a strength check, and he's like, he's just, he, he never got it. So we never liked this guy. But what's funny is I met him later. I actually met him like last year, actually fairly recently. And he's cool. He's he's a great guy. Uh, he was just kind of in this phase, I think. I, I actually feel bad for not liking Vegan Steve back then because he's actually a lot of fun. So um, I, I actually do. I, I, I think I met him on board gaming night. So I actually should go back and just try to make friends with Steve because he's actually really. You know, he's I actually didn't recognize him because he was really smart and well spoken and and he wasn't a douchebag. <laughs> um, so, I imagine I was a pretty big douchebag, still am, um, but, uh, so anyway, I had to explain Vegan Steve, just so you, and Crazy Mike, was, the deal with Crazy Mike was, um, we liked him, but he, he really wasn't all that crazy, he just looked crazy, he looked like he was the kind of guy who would write a manifesto in a cabin somewhere, so he looked like a motorhead geek, you know, so, um, he was perfectly intelligent and fine, you know, he was, he was a lot of fun. He just, uh, he had the worst luck. He was notorious for having the worst fucking luck. I remember playing with a campaign, in a campaign with Crazy Mike, and he failed to roll a successful to hit roll on a mon- like, he failed to hit a monster with, you know, rolling a dice, so you have to roll high. I remember he failed to roll a successful to hit roll in two months, and we played, like, every week. So within about, like, seven, eight weeks, he failed to connect a single time with anything. He, he failed everything. He, he was just fucking jinxed. Um, so he... And we, 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 were, we were making fun of him. We always bust each other's balls. But he, nobody wanted to sit next to Crazy Mike because I was the only guy willing to sit next to him because I didn't believe in, like, bad luck. I was just like, whatever. And I rolled fine. It was just him, this fucker. Like, he could not... He, he could not buy a hit to save his life. And, like, so he was, he was doing everything he could to min-max his character. You know, he was... But he, this fucker, he could not, we were like, get back, like, your dice suck. I, we, like, we didn't know, we were trying to find some explanation, because this guy was a, was a statistical anomaly, really. There's, really, like, really no, like, statistically, he should have accidentally rolled over a 10 in two months, you know, just, but it wasn't working for this guy. And so Big Mike was kind of the grizzled veteran. Um, he really liked the way I ran campaigns. 
uh, he always complimented me very heartily. He's like, I've been playing D&D for so long, and you did great, you know. And I'm like, thanks, man. So um, they all liked my campaign, um, but I was really young, and I didn't know some of these rules. Anyway, so Crazy Steve, he's or, uh, Vegan Steve, he's, you know, he's fucking around the temple, he's being a fucknut, and he's, he's, he's stumbling over everything, and we're getting frustrated with him, and everyone really bands together, and they, they, they help him out, and so, but the thing is, Steve isn't really saying anything this whole time, uh, Crazy Mike's just, just swinging like a maniac at these serpents that are flying out, and he's not hitting anything, but he's absorbing damage, he's actually, we, we, we found a role for him, he would, he would tank, you know, he would, he just, he upped his AC to a ridiculous degree so that he could just absorb punishment. We just kept healing him, or they kept healing him, and he was happy with that. You know, he had a role. He was doing something successfully. So he kind of, what he did was, um, Mike would essentially find ways to draw aggro. You know, he would he would taunt people. He would, uh, he would try to get creative with his actions. He would throw grenade weapons, like flaming oil, which you didn't necessarily need to roll a successful to hit roll to... to damage somebody, so he would, like, do area effect. He really should have played a wizard in hindsight, but he liked playing a ranger. He loved playing... What he did was he, uh... He would play a ranger so he could swing two swords. And swinging two swords, he would get two to hit rolls. So he would roll twice as many dice, and he's like, I should statistically be able to hit something with two dice rolls per round, right? And so, um, no, he didn't. But, uh, it was a good idea, you know. I really admired that. Um, but... They, they really did kind of, they, they did uh, overcome great obstacles, and they, it was a really epic campaign. And so finally they breach the final barrier, they defeat the last guardian, and they find this genie. And so they, they all gather around in a circle, and I had this whole thing all planned out. But what they were supposed to do was they were supposed to wish to have their curse removed so they wouldn't turn into animals anymore. Because that was the whole point of the campaign. You know, they, they're turning into animals, they go see a wise sage, and he's like, oh, there's only one thing that can reverse the, the curse, the mark of the beast, and that's the, the genie who lives in this ancient jungle temple. And so, yes, an Arabic, you know, an Arabic genie on a kind of an Aztec jungle temple, whatever, it's D&D. So they're like, so they go, oh, we need to find this genie to reverse the curse. So that was what they're supposed to do. That did not happen. So, um... What happens is they gather around, they rub the fucking lamp, and the genie pops out, and he goes, Oh, you've awakened me from my 3,000-year sleep! And he says, You are granted one wish! Because he's a really powerful genie, he only gives one wish. So he's like, You are granted one wish! Speak, mortals, and tell me what you would have of me! And immediately, fucking immediately, Steve slams his hands on the table, and he says, I wish for a deck of many things! And without missing a beat, for some reason, I snap my fingers and point at him, and he goes, You got it! And everyone turns and looks at Vegan Steve. And for 10, 15 seconds, there's this dead silence. Everyone's eyes go... Everyone's eyes go fucking wide as saucers. And everyone is trying to make this fucker's head explode with their mind. They're like... And you couldn't have rehearsed this any better... I wish I'd taped it. I, like, I, did, I wasn't even recording this at this point, but for like 15 seconds, they're staring at Vegan Steve, and Vegan Steve is this biggest shit-eating grin on a, a, of his life. He's like... <laughs> um, and he's, he's sitting there, and in perfect unison, they yell different things, but in perfect unison, they all yell out, I draw my weapon and kill that motherfucker! Or, I pull out my broadsword and I do cold shot to the head! Or, I whip out my mace and I bash that fucker in the skull! Um, so everyone, five players, like, just immediately and in perfect unison, announce their intentions to outright fucking murder Vegan Steve and his fucking traitorous ass. So, Steve immediately yells at me. He says, I turn my ass around and run, and I start pulling cards out of the deck. And I'm like, um, well, you have to tell me, the deck communicates with you telepathically, because you have to announce before you draw cards how many cards you're going to draw out of the deck. And so, Steve 
knows that a deck of many things can be really good, but he's not very good at D&D, as I said, so he doesn't know how many cards are in the deck. There's 22 or 23. I think it's 23. So Steve says, I turn around and I start running, throwing cards over my shoulder. And he, I go, how many? And he goes, um, I don't know, 11. <laughs> and I go, oh shit. Okay. So, and so Vegan Steve, since he's a, since he's a thief, he's actually really fast. And I think he actually had, like, boots of striding or something like that. So he was outpacing these fuckers. Like, he was running, he was pulling cards. And so, like, I had the players do a few shots. Like, the ranger pulled out his bow and started shooting, but he missed. Because, of course, Crazy Mike always misses. And so, um, so he wasn't taking any damage, so he was, like, he was pulling cards. But here's the thing. I was like, Steve is so fucked. He's so fucked. Because there's only 11 good cards in the deck. And he, he announced he was pulling 11. So, like, he, half those cards are going to be bad. But here's the thing. He pulled every single good card. Every one. I gave him a deck of cards. I shuffled it. I shuffled the fuck out of it. I had him cut the deck. And I was like... Okay, start pulling cards. And so he pulls cards, and he gets, like, he gains a level. One of the cards is you immediately gain a level, and so he gained a level. And he pulls another card, and he gets, like, he gets, I think it was, like, five loyal retainers who are, like, fourth-level level fighters. And so he's, like, awesome. And he pulls a card, and he gets, he says, you get a keep. You, 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 own, you now own a castle with, like, a treasury, and you know it immediately where it is. You're like, you don't, you don't have it, like, right in front of you, but it, you know where it is, and you can go get it. And he's like, uh, you get a magic weapon of your choice. I forget what all the cards do, but he gets, like, he gets every single thing. And so his tenth card is, it's, it's unbelievable. These guys cannot fucking believe this guy's luck. He gets everything. He gets magical weapons, he gets levels, he gets gold, he gets treasure, he gets retainers. I, I wish I actually had the DMD so I could tell you everything that good that he got, but every single thing he got was perfect. He, every single card. So I go, okay, 10th card. He pulls the card that says, you immediately can escape any situation of your choice. I think that, I forget the exact wording, but it's like, you immediately will escape any bad situation of your choosing. So he's like, he's got these five motherfuckers with swords calling for his goddamn blood. And so he goes, well, uh, I want to be teleported 100 miles to the north. And so I go, done, you're teleported 100 miles to the north. And it wasn't in the ocean or anything like that. I, I looked, I looked on the map. He was like, he's, he's not in a civilized area, but he teleports 100 miles to the north. I'm like, you're safe. And they, did, they didn't hear him say that, so they don't know where the fuck he is. I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. He, he, he basically fucked you. He got everything he wanted, and he's gone. And so they're like, we're, no, fuck that. We're finding this motherfucker. And so they start doing this thing where they start, like, they do, like, concentric circles. For, you know, they, they start searching in concentric circles. And I'm like, do you have any idea how long it's going to take you to search for 100 miles in a concentric circle, like, marching? And they're like, they, they planned it out. They're like, no, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do like, we're going to march out a mile, walk a circle. We're going to march out a mile, walk a circle. And like, we're going to find this guy. I don't know where the fuck he is. We're going to find him. And I'm like, this is, this is not a good plan, guys. Like, you're never going to find it. Because he's going to be running away from you. He's going to be running really fast. He's like, and they're like, you don't get it. We are finding this motherfucker. If it's the last thing we do, we are going to find Vegan Steve and mount his fucking head on a pipe after we fuck it like a train. And I'm like... Okay, but you're probably gonna turn into like you're probably gonna turn into the animals by then, and so uh, and they're like we don't we don't care we're gonna we're gonna figure something out. So basically, vegan Steve had derailed my whole campaign. He just completely derailed it. So I'm like fuck. So I start to think, and I go um, fuck, and I, I uh, I'm like well wait 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 guys wait 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 you. Uh, Steve, you need to draw your 11th card. And he goes, oh, did I say 11? And I go, yeah, you said 11. You drew 10. And he, he starts, he's like, oh, shit. So he starts counting through, and he's like, oh, yeah, I did draw 10. And he's like, well, how many more good cards are there in the deck? And I go, there's one. But he, he's like, everyone's like, well, you drew every other good card already, so draw the last one. He draws the last card, it's the void. He dies. 
the void takes your soul, it sucks your soul out. So the, he draws the void, his soul gets sucked into the void, he's dead. Steve's dead. <laughs> so, um, I think what happens is, I forget how, but, um, hey, no biting, no. I think what happens is, I think somebody had like a, some kind of scrying spell, or a clairvoyance, or like an augury. I forget what, but they cast a spell to find where Steve had gone. I think they said like, I think they asked the question like, if we march to the north, will we find Steve? Or Steve's character. And the answer was yes. And so they started marching to the north. And so they marched north, and they found Steve's body. Because he had just been killed by the void. And so, not content with the fact that he was dead with the deck of many things clutched in his fist. Actually, it vanishes. When you, when you, no, it wasn't, it wasn't in his fist. When, when you do your deck of many things, it vanishes. It goes away. So, like, he had all this treasure around him. He had all this magic swag. He had, like, the deed to his castle, like, clutched in his fist. And they were not content with the fact this guy was dead. He didn't suffer enough. So they immediately set about his corpse and chop him into bits the size of fucking croutons. And they start immediately looting his shit. And they take all his stuff. And I think what I did was I had mercy on them. And I said one of the magic items that, he, what, that Steve got was a set of potions that would reverse the curse. Because I said that I said that classifies as like his most pressing predicament at this point. So like when, when he said teleport to the north, I was like, okay, you teleport to the north and you get a potion that reverses your your lethal curse. So they drink the... I, I, I fudged it, yeah, but they they found Steve and they reversed their curse and that was that was the end of Vegan Steve. But they didn't kick him out of the group. I was actually very, very uh, appreciative because I think Steve learned his lesson. Um, <laughs> he had his one shot. He had his one shot to break the game and kind of make a name for himself and become the lord of a castle uh, to become great. And... Uh, he got greedy. He didn't know how many cards were in the deck of many things. He, he's, if he'd have said ten, it would have been suicidal, but he would have made it. He would have made it free and clear. Now, you may ask how I learned this lesson, how, how this is a lesson to me, because I didn't actually include the deck of many things. But another one of these rules is basically never give your players wishes. Never, never let your players have wishes of any kind because they will fuck each other. More often than not, they will fuck each other hard. So that's kind of a corollary. No decks of many things, no wishes. Because when you give players absolute power, it corrupts them absolutely and within a matter of seconds. So that's the story of the, uh, the genie and the deck of many things.